Hi friends, and welcome to the Shits and Gigs podcast, where we keep the vibe high, the humor gets raunchy, and things get spicy when we talk about food. This is your host, Meg Davis, and we're here tonight for an episode of Bath Bombs, where I am here to connect with all of you while I'm quite literally relaxing in my bathtub. This week's topic is surrounded by just feeling blessed, even through the chaos of the last couple of weeks, I am just feeling in like a very like grateful state. So I just wanted to share with some of you guys how I've kind of navigated to get here through some kind of like really tough times. I'll be honest, this past year between transitioning to parenthood and just like some life stuff going on, it was like we had to set some hardcore boundaries around our budget and just like time management and figuring all the things out. It was it took like a huge hit on my mental health, especially because I wasn't able to prioritize the level of self-care that I was in a routine with prior to Kim coming along. And that was really hard for me because those practices really grounded me on the regular and to not have that incorporated in my life was really hard. So first step to getting into this like grateful space is somehow, some way, finding time for you every single day. So for us, the hardest part for me was I was really routine uh, with doing like a morning mindset routine. And when Cam came along, um, he like has not been the greatest sleeper. He had two sleeps of the nights this week. (laughs) We'll see how that trends. He's had some killer molars coming in for like, seems like months. But um, anyways, he has not been a solid sleeper. So to just solidify any kind of morning anything was not very motivating because we were getting up a bunch at night so like our sleep wasn't fantastic so i was just for almost the full year honestly prioritizing just getting as much sleep as i can and attempting to wake up 30 minutes earlier than he was going to but that was like very chaotic and unorganized for a few months like i I would say I was able to finally consistently have, I would say even like five out of seven days a week of morning routine, maybe the last two to three months. The last two to three months, I have been in a very magnetic space and I fully believe it has everything to do with taking that time for myself every single day to what I do is I do some core and hip mobility moves, literally takes maybe two minutes. And then I started incorporating 30 push-ups a day because that was something that I, that made me feel really strong in the past when, or just strong in general, but not having the ability to prioritize like a gym session right now. um, I just knew to get my mind right, I really needed to be moving my body again. And I remember in the past, something that I always look back on like in videos is when I was able to bang out 25 push-ups and no questions asked in any position possible. Um, it just made me feel so strong looking back at those videos. So you know what? I was like, this is something that I can take for myself and just bang out. I'm gonna do 30 push-ups every single day. I do 30 regular push-ups, which are with like your elbows tucked in. It's more of like that tricep approach and then out wide, which is more like a chest heavy position. And then triangle is a little bit of everything, honestly. It really trips up your weight distribution. So that one's really challenging. And what I did was because I I was pretty weak, honestly, postpartum, like very slowly. I was very strong and I weight lifted and stayed very active pretty much up until I gave birth. So. I definitely had that in my favor and postpartum when it was okay to do so with my healing and everything. I did try to incorporate at least deep stretching and those mobility moves. However, you just get caught up in it all and I stopped doing those mobility moves. I had a rough probably two months with my lower back and SI joint because I stopped doing those. And once you stop and you get to a certain spot, at least for me, It's hard to, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes, again, like consistent use of those moves for me, um, for me to like see long-term success with not having back pain, which knock on wood, the last two or three months, I have been doing that 
I would say maybe six out of seven days a week, every single morning. Uh, I just do the couple hip mobility moves. If you want to know what I've been doing, check out my reels. I just made one on Instagram not too long ago at megdavis.healthcoach on Instagram. And I swear by these moves, they keep me feeling loose and pain-free. So I'm a huge fan of incorporating different mobility ideas instead of trying pain management via medication to start. I mean, I have a pretty high pain tolerance though. So I mean, if someone experiences pain at a higher level than I do, I don't know if I'd be able to tolerate it without incorporating some medication at least to start. So do whatever feels good for you, but I highly recommend taking time for yourself every single day and prioritizing whatever you're, you just like really sit with yourself for five minutes and feel out what your soul needs. Just ask yourself like, what feels stuck and heavy right now? What feels drained? Where do I need love for myself? And just take 30 minutes a day to just address whatever your body needs at that moment got deep. I'm on a roll here. <laughs> um, and then, so I wanted to more, so I've been feeling one stuck and heavy area for us for the last year or so has been finances. It's been really tight. We'll be completely transparent. And we were at a place where we just, we couldn't really fuck around anymore to be quite frank. We really had to sit down, figure out our cash flow, cut out some fat in our spending and really just hone in and bunker at home and make it fun and so because of that like we really had to find ways to make it fun and make it sustainable so and because of that diamond under pressure energy I mean it was stressful as all hell but I grew a new business out of it I started a pot this podcast and these are things I probably would never do unless I was forced to explore other options and because of where we're at financially we don't have the funds to put cam in a daycare so i can pick up some extra hours or find a part-time job and because of that it put me in like a really stuck mindset i felt like one of the things that i try and obtain as like a standard for myself always is just showing up to win no matter what. And then I just really try and give myself grace in continuing to embrace. Like if I showed up to win, the end result is not a reflection of my efforts. And I feel like that has really kept me grounded when I'm feeling overwhelmed. And when I'm ever in a dark space where I feel like I, again, I'm like giving it my all and it's just not happening in the way that I would hope for our family. I just stop and I say, you can do hard things. What's feeling stuck and heavy? What do I have control over? And what do I need to release because it's out of my control? And those are just a couple questions that always ground me in that space. So definitely 10 out of 10 recommend just like really like embracing self-awareness and giving yourself that time. So with finances, like I said, we definitely had to get creative with budgeting and stuff. One of the major things was just no stupid spending anymore. That was just, we had to get really serious about that. Um, So anything we ordered on Amazon or got at Target was like very intentional and like very minimal excess buying. And so that was a huge standard. We um, were cutting down or paying off credit card, one like small credit card, like as fast as possible because that interest just eats at you. So I highly recommend like if credit card debt is one of the debts that you have because I can only imagine the average American has at least, I would say at least two to however many, I don't even know how high it could go, two to eight debts. But um, I would definitely prioritize paying those off as fast as possible because the interest on credit cards is insane and you'll end up triple paying triple what you actually spent. So pro tip there um, based on experience and um, eating out was like not a thing this year. We were humbled very quickly when it came to not eating out and that has been or has made 
this new venture into like the Not Your Average Prep membership so fun. Like I literally feel like a chef at home because of all the push, like the push to fuel my inner child and just falling in love with cooking again and finding ways to make delicious meals that are not particularly healthy. Like find those healthy swaps. Like I just love, I, what really tickles my pickle is taking an unhealthy recipe and capturing that flavor, but with nutrients dense objects or not objects, foods. <laughs> so that's what I really stand behind with the Nacho Average Prep recipes that I'm launching is like, they are all recipes that I've tried personally and that I've poured in as much love to capture that flavor profile and put it into something that's gonna really benefit your body and its functioning. <clears throat> so if you haven't looked into it already, I will put the link below, but you can also go on the Patreon app and just search Nacho Average Prep, like the chip, and uh, it should pop up there. The $9.99 a month membership is, it gives you access to all of the initial, or we call it like the OG recipe drop and resources drop. So everyone as a member gets access to the meal prep template guide. So that essentially breaks down the flow that Josh and I have embraced over the last year to cut down on cook time during the work week because even if you're not a parent if you're like a busy person in general you don't have fucking time to cook dinner every single night so we condensed as much as possible using this method and we also worked in like a fun dinner once a week we call it your fuel your inner foodie dinner and this is a one night a week that it's like our date night that we set a pretty hard boundary around protecting like we miss a friday night only if it's like maybe a date night out because we're still spending that time together or like if it's like a need be thing, <laughs> like needs to happen, then we'll actually cancel. But usually we'll set a pretty hard boundary about protecting that date night on Fridays and we connect over making pizza every single night. So the Fuel Your Inner Foodie recipe collection has more than just pizza, but that's like our thing that we embrace every, every single week to continue to respect that eating out often is still not in the budget. So that allows us to have something extra special once a week where we get to connect and just indulge in a meal that we don't even think twice about the nutrients. <laughs> so I definitely recommend at least embracing that habit too, um, either individually or as a couple or a partnership um, because that's been really fun and it makes going through those hard times a little softer because you have that time to connect and decompress and like really express yourself naturally at least once a week um so not eating out was a big thing when it came to really showing the universe that we were trying to show up and receive blessings again because i'm telling you right now if you're not doing aligned action with whatever goal that you have you're not going to get shit and you're going to continue to feel like crap and you're going to continue to dig your hole just a little deeper with every poor decision you make so unless you get serious and you really get clear on what you want and then also get clear on what action steps you can be taking to get there, you are not going to receive nearly as many blessings as you would if you took the time to really figure that out for yourself. So 10 out of 10 recommend taking that like reflection time and then really doing like a self check. That's like something I do quite often to keep myself in line because it is so easy nowadays. We are so hands-on and have access to everything we could ever want, like literally in our hands 24 seven. So that makes it really hard to set those boundaries sometimes. But if you're really serious and you're fucking sick of feeling the way that you feel, um, definitely get serious about all of those things. And I wish you the best in manifesting that. And so with all of our actions in place, we then did simple, simple, small, little things around the house. Things like clearing out closets and cleaning up the basement and just getting rid of clutter is a big one, just like clearing things. And then I'm big on manifestation and like whatever is at top of mind is what you're like a magnet for. So I did this thing where when it was really tight, I put $1 with like a magnet on the fridge. So just like being in the mindset that like no matter what happens today, we still have this $1 to our name. 
So that was like a huge thing. And I started like adding a dollar every time. I just happened to have a spare dollar in my wallet. And then one day I threw a 20 up there. And I'm telling you guys, this is like something so fucking stupid and silly, but when you're just in an intentional mindset and you're in living intentionally with your actions, you will not even believe the blessings that will come your way. This first quarter has been so magical and still very hard to navigate, but because we're doing these little things every single day and just like embracing that mindfulness the blessings have been pouring in and I truly believe that anyone is capable of getting to this space if you just are open to it and you also like I said get clear and act in alignment and just have that mindset that like abundance is always surrounding you and the universe always has your back no matter what and then another little fun thing I have we have like a little nook when you first walk in and I had this like just decorative tray I guess you could call it. So when we cleaned out the basement, I found like a passport cover like holder and then um, some crystals and just like random knickknacks downstairs. And I put some of my crystals in here, um, pennies that I've picked up, which I associate that with like a sign for my angels. Um, Some like little diamond gems that I had from like an Herbalife event, which I associated to like team growth, which is something like it's, It's been eight years and I still haven't been able to attract the team that I had dreamed of just yet. However, I never, like I said, if I know I'm showing up to my fullest ability, I fully believe that it will happen when it's, it'll unfold when it's meant to unfold for me. So, however, the last year I have felt so overwhelmed, I couldn't even think about mentoring anyone into the business. So, and We're also not really plugged into the event structure, which used to be super motivating for that mindset. And uh, I just haven't found the mental capacity to really prioritize going back to that yet every single month. So anyways, when I found those diamonds, I was like, I should really plant this seed again. Like I do want to really impact someone's life through this opportunity that I have here. And I truly believe I can do that. And we just got literally handed over thank you shout out to fellow herbalife distributors this culture is second to none when it comes to supportiveness you obviously have your handful of people that are very uh what's the word i want secretive not secretive they protect like their they protect their blessings they're not open to sharing their how they got there And then there's a large majority that is so open and so dedicated to just sharing what they have to offer because they want everyone to succeed just like they did. And we were just gifted this like awesome um, training opportunity for something that's like a supernatural um, flow in our community, the Lit Tees. So we just kicked off a Lit Tee Ambassador program. And I love this because with life feeling more heavy and expensive nowadays for the average person um to try and empower someone when they're in a low vibe space to start an entire business as like a health coach which anyone can do it like literally anyone i had zero background going into health coaching outside of my just my own personal fitness journey but i found it very difficult to cast vision for people when they were in such a low vibe space because the last couple years have been hard for everybody like with the covid crisis and everything else happening in this world we live in a fucking scary world right now like no joke uh so to not i don't want to say convince because i never feel like i convince anyone to like i never i very rarely feel like a salesperson unless i'm in a very unmagnetic space but um, it was hard to cast vision for people. I think that's how I want to put it. Yeah, it was really hard to cast vision for something that <coughs> had so much capability of being that big. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm, ginger ray tea, yum. Okay, back on track. Um, so I have this tray right when you walk in. It has the letter G on it for Davis, our last name. And then I try to keep fresh blooms in it at all times. 
So that's like a special low cost treat that I do to just freshen up the home every couple weeks. Or Josh will surprise me with flowers, which is always a nice gesture. And then on the tray, um, there's things that represent travel, um, just positive energy plugs with like the crystals. Um, number 13, this year is 13 years together and that has always been one of our like lucky numbers. So just casting good vibes for the whole year, thinking like this is our year where things are really gonna get crazy and like we're gonna like pivot up from here, essentially. That's the vibe we're going for this year. There's another dollar just for that financial abundance, the diamonds like I already mentioned, some pennies that I picked up. So just really elevating the vibe and the energy of our space right from the get-go when you walk in the door. These are just very small, simple changes that you can do to just elevate the vibe in your space so that you just remain more open and the things that you're working towards are like at the front of mind. We also have our vision board in our kitchen. Um, so just stuff like that, that really supports your mindset to stay on track with what you want. Sheesh, I went on a real tangent tonight, but that felt powerful. So I hope you guys got a lot out of that and I hope this is helpful for you. And if you ever have any questions about any of that or you just want someone to lean on, um, I'm always here for anyone. I truly feel like connection and communication are my superpowers in life. And I truly, genuinely, really love meeting new people or just connecting with people on a deeper level. So always here. Feel free to message me anytime. Um, I already gave my Instagram handle, but I'll plug that in the description as well. And as always on our Bath Bombs episodes, we're going to wrap it up with a wellness mocktail. I made it this past weekend and I can't stop drinking it. It is a blackberry liftoff, my fave, with half a teaspoon of raspberry herbal tea concentrate, <clears throat> two to three capfuls of mandarin aloe, or just a heavy pour like myself. And then I topped it off with the cucumber lime drink mix, which is also vitamin C boosted. So if you would like to try that out, just let me know. I could always send you a tea kit in the mail and... If not, if you want to come visit us at Elevated Nutrition, 34 New Snack Hill Road, Unit 2 in West Greenwich, Rhode Island, I can whip that up for you. I'll inform the girls so everyone knows how to make my latest favorite combo. Uh, I think we determined it tastes like the blue freeze pop, like the ones that you like have to push up. It's so yum and so refreshing. Definitely 10 out of 10 recommend trying it this summer. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. Toodles. Thanks for tuning in.